One day, Thomas puffed into Natford Station where Gordon was getting ready to leave with the express. Good morning, Gordon, said Thomas. How are you today? Tired but good, said Gordon. My, Mr. Conductor is having us work very hard. I mean, Daisy's help in the countryside is helping immensely, but still not enough. We're being worked very hard. Almost to the point where we need another engine. Indeed, said Thomas. Wait, do you hear something? Help! Help! My brakes have failed! And I lost my train! Help! Said James as he raced through Natford Station. Soon followed by his train. His car is derailed right outside of the station. But James kept flying down the track. You race through the, do the docks, onto the viaduct, but fell below. Back at Natford Station, Percy arrived. Hey guys, said Percy, I'm going to help James. He crashed near the viaduct. Hopefully he's okay, said Percy, he puffed away. Father James for being late, said Gordon. Now I'm going to be late. And he raced away. However, he started going slower and slower. Soon he derailed at the docks. Oh, bother, said Gordon. Now I'm going to be even more late. Hopefully Percy comes for me. Eventually, Percy did come, but it took him a while, because he had to help James. Rosie and Peter Sam took the junk tankers away, and Percy shunted Gordon and James into some sidings at the yard, awaiting repairs. Victor puffed into the yard to see what was wrong with Gordon and James. Good news, said Victor. All you need is one part, and it's on the mainland, said Victor. Great, said Mr. Conductor, but who's going to get it? Why not me and Rusty, sir? Rusty knows his way around the mainland. I'll go get him. Victor puffed away. Later, Victor met Rusty at the junction. Hello, Rusty, said Victor. We have a special job. We're going to be going to the mainland to get a special part for Gordon and James. And I thought, since you know your way around the mainland, you could show me around, and since I don't know the part, I could get the part. Sound good to you? Asked Victor. Sounds good to me, said Rusty. And the two departed. Later that evening, they came through Tidmouth Sheds. Well, we're off to the mainland, said Rusty and Victor. Everyone tooted their whistles goodbye, and Rusty and Victor set off for the mainland. The two left Tidmouth Sheds and stopped at the foot of the bridge. Then... They gracefully crept over the bridge and glided down the other side. They didn't know how to explain it, but things felt different on the mainland, more sinister and eerie. Then the two disappeared into the distance. The two friends crept along the mainland line. But then, they found a switch track. Oh bother, said Rusty. Where do we go? Wait a second. I think I hear something, said Victor. The two friends listened and thought they heard someone say hello. They backed up and onto the switch track, puffed onto the old rusty track and into the trees. Then, 
They stopped and saw a sight that made them gasp. It was the Flying Scotsman. Oh my, are you? Yes, you are. Are you the Flying Scotsman? Asked Rusty. Yes, I am, proclaimed the engine. Or was the Flying Scotsman. Years of neglect has done this to me. The other railway doesn't care much for steam. And they put me on this siding and I started rusting away. What a shame, said Rusty. Hold on, are you Gordon's brother? Yes, I am, said the Flying Scotsman. Do you know where he is? He asked. Yes, he's on Sodor, and we're from Sodor too, they said. Well, that's wonderful. Do you think you can get me out of here? We'll try, said Rusty and Victor. It had been three days since Victor and Rusty went to the mainland to find the engine parts, and the engines on Sodor were getting worried. Edward puffed into Natford Station and was greeted by Mr. Conductor. Hello, Edward, said Mr. Conductor. You look worried. What's the matter? Well, sir, it's been three days since Rusty and Victor went to the mainland. It shouldn't th take them that long to get some engine parts, said Edward. Well, maybe you and Thomas should go look for them, um, suggested Mr. Conductor. Great idea, said Edward. Thomas, are you okay with that? Asked Edward. Yes, I'm fine with that. Should I bring a flatbed in tow just in case they're derailed? That's not a bad idea, Thomas, said Mr. Conductor. Okay, said Thomas. And Thomas left the station. Edward soon followed with his train. Edward puffed into Knapford Station where Thomas was waiting for him. Are you ready, Edward? asked Thomas. Ready as I'll ever be, said Edward. And the two friends left Knapford Station. Thomas went over the bridge to the mainland first, and gracefully glided the, over the other side. He whistled, and his whistle echoed into the distance. Edward soon followed. Then the two friends disappeared into the distance. Luckily, Rusty heard Thomas's whistle, and he came right away. Thomas and Edward, we could really use your help. We found something very exciting, Victor and I. How so? Just follow us, said Rusty. And the two friends followed the little diesel. When Thomas and Edward first saw the Flying Scotsman, they were just as surprised as when Victor er, and Rusty first saw the Flying Scotsman. No doubt about it, said Edward. We gotta get you to Sodor. Yes, but how? said Rusty. I have an idea. Why not Mr. Thomas and I take his co-tender, Mr. Edward ta takes the engine, and, and Victor and Rusty takes the water tender. Suggested Toad. Great idea, said all the engines, and everyone set to work. Oi, what is this? Yee-hee, yee-hee, the steamer is escaping. Yee-hee! That's our cue, said all the engines, and everyone raced away to Sodor. didn't stop moving until they were safely in the island of Sodor Works. They 
slip tying Scott's mittens and the notes and left him awaiting repairs. However, soon enough, Mr. Conductor found out, but promised to keep Flying Scotsman's presence a secret for Gordon's sake as a surprise for him. Soon enough, Gordon and James were repaired and back in working order, as was the Flying Scotsman, and he finally got to see his brother in such a long time. Scotsman, is that you? Yes it is, Gordon. You up for another race? Of course, said Gordon. Okay, you asked for it, and Flying Scotsman raced away. Hey, wait a second, you didn't even get to say go yet, said Gordon. Oh, I missed you so much, Scotsman, said Gordon, as he raced alongside the Flying Scotsman.